Hello and welcome to everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us. We might just give a couple of seconds to um, the more guests to join. So just bear with us while we wait for the internet to catch up with us. All right. Look, thank you all very much for joining us today on I think this is our fifth um uh linkedin live event hosted by sustainable australia fund uh thank you very much for taking time out of your lunch break i hope to to join us and listen to us for what i hope is going to be a quite entertaining and um interesting event here we have a couple of guests um on the screen that you see and just before we in, jump into the introductions um really what i'm looking to talk about here is give you know what the format of the event today so we'll go through some of the introductions we'll talk for about you know half an hour amongst ourselves and hopefully that's an entertaining watch for everybody there and then we'd like to really open it up to to questions and answers so please as we're going through please um type in your questions uh they'll pop up so that we might be able to respond to them and we'll try and uh, collate those and talk back to it so it's a bit of an interactive kind of event for us both us as presenters and, and and guest speakers but also yourselves as the audience please let, let us know what you're thinking um so today's topic you know driving sustainability in the hospitality industry um really is looking at waste management and environmental upgrade finance and so a lot of uh our business has been focused upon energy in and energy consumption and generation energy efficiency within business but but waste and waste management particularly in hospitality is a massive issue uh, one which we have um, two guest speakers that are imminently qualified far better than I to talk about this subject matter um, so you know first and foremost you know, I'd like to welcome um, we're joined today by Rowan Ding who's uh, global sustainable sales operations manager at green eco technologies I think rather than me going off and butchering your introduction rowan if you'd be able to introduce yourself tell me a bit about yourself your business and um yeah okay. sure <clears throat> thanks for that scott um uh, uh hello everybody um so yes yeah, so as scott said rowan din um uh, global sustainability uh, uh manager for green echo technologies i'm one of the co-founders of the business um we've been around since 2016 and we're an australian business and we've developed a bit of um technology that processes food waste on site and then we uh after processing we create a product which we then repurpose um so simple and we currently manufacturing here in australia looking after four major regions being the uk uae singapore and australia Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for that. I, it's quite an interesting technology you guys have, which, you know, we'll dive into a little bit in, in today's discussion. Uh, and also joining is Doug Hartman. He's the National Manager for Bioenergy of Gravitas Energy Group. Again, uh, welcome, Doug. I will let you do a proper job of introducing yourself rather than I. Thanks, Scott. Um, nice, to, nice to be here today and um, appreciate the opportunity. Thanks for everyone uh, joining us today. Um, yeah, I'm the national manager for uh, bioenergy for Gravitas and also run a company called Heart Bioenergy, um, building uh, anaerobic digesters, biogas systems, um, specifically for um, organic wastes uh, in both the agricultural side, upstream from hospitality a little bit, and into uh, food waste and post-consumer uh, food waste um, systems. So yeah. Very excited to be able to present a little bit more and how the relevance to uh, hospitality um, in what we and what Rowan's doing and um, some you know practical things that people can walk away with you know in this industry. So. Oh, good, good thing. Um, so you might, you know, Doug, just tell me a little bit about your business and what markets you're targeting. Who's your kind of ideal customers? Because we use terms like biodigesters, but you know, paint us a picture of what we might see. Um, so for, for us, um, we, like I said, we work across agriculture and all kinds of ag, ag waste. Um, but you know, we've got a, a big focus on food waste, uh, particularly where you get um, you know fairly large volumes, um, you know, aggregated um, and 
I'll let Rowan go into a little bit more about the uh, material that they use, which is very suitable for digestion. But um, in the hospitality industry, as you said, it's, it's a big issue of, of the waste itself. So we would be looking at uh, large campuses um, and, and other places where there's a double benefit of uh, converting that, uh, reducing that food waste, converting that then into energy um, and uh, repowering uh, boilers or electrical systems with kind of clean, renewable energy in, in that case. Um, and we look beyond that as well. Um, part of our systems bolt on very well with uh, water uh, reuse, um, which is, is definitely becoming a hot topic for food producers um, and, and upstream of hospitality, but even into hospitality where, you know, water conservation reuse, um, you know, is going to uh, be needed very soon, um, you know, as, as we have to conserve our, our fresh water resources. Um, and then it's about um, turning those byproducts into a usable um, input for food production. Um, so we're, we work across, yeah, hospitality, uh, food production, um, and upstream into the agricultural sector. Um, so that, that's the bulk of what we're looking at, um, you know, in, in Harpo Energy and in, in the Gravitas group. Very good. Right. And, and, and thank you for the uh, admins putting up a picture of your kit there. It helps helps our audience understand what we're talking about. Now, um, Rowan, just quickly a little bit about your technology and um, your business and who's your ideal audience customer? So we're, compared to, to Doug on the larger scale, we, we are uh, smaller operations where it's all on site. So uh, typically our target market is any organisations that produce food waste of 100 kilos to 800 kilos per day. And so those industries could be uh, hospitals, hospi uh, hospitality, being convention centres, it's mine sites, um, uh, education, so schooling. So anyone that produces, and typically we're looking for unavoidable food waste. So it's all the preparation in, um, especially like a healthcare uh, scenario where they have a la carte um, meals. It's all the, the pre um um, waste uh, of all the preparation and then we're looking at the tray waste after the uh, non-consumed um, food from the patients and so wide and quite quite varied um, organizations that we actually look into and across all different so whether it's uh, metropolitan regional or remote um, a number of our installations in the middle of the desert in Caratha or Roxby Downs or even in the middle of Atacama Desert in Chile uh, yeah, just right. have the versati versatility of being if you're producing food waste don't send it to landfill put it through a system such as ours on site we will create a byproduct and, and we'll pass it on to organizations such as doug's so there, there's some global food miles there at least you're not transporting the food around everything we'll go to that one a, a little bit later all right so let's just kind of really kick it off and say you know what, what's the challenges hospitality businesses really kind of face here you know um you know we, we're familiar with businesses really have high high and rising input costs around labor they also have you know energy um and also you know you know waste is a is a, is a big input cost and, and also water kind of efficiencies you know the, the the common challenge we see when we deal with businesses of all sizes is that it's an expensive proposition to try and deliver um respond to these kind of challenges businesses are facing and, and it's often easier just to keep going the way in which you go i've got a couple of interesting stats here um, a, about the size of the problem which is at a macro level and, and each of you have different responses to, to different scales here but you know Worldwide, food waste costs over $1.75 trillion per annum, you know, and, and Australia wastes up to 35% of the food it produces. We produce enough food in Australia to feed 60 million people and 35% of that is wasted. You know, for me, that's mm. just the you know, mind-boggling kind of problem that, that you just don't quite, you know, to try and put a picture around it, that's filling the MCG and, you know, sorry, I'm Melbourne based. So hopefully the audiences actually understand our great local icon here, but it's filling that nine times over and that's just phenomenal. But, you know, how do you kind of translate that down to an individual business and how do they make differences? 
Doug, you know, it might be worthwhile, um, you know, you know, talking to you know from your perspective. You know, what what's the kind of waste costs? Yeah, you know, for businesses, it's a bit bit. How long's a piece of string? But you know, it, it is. I mean, there, there's a lot of you know costs. So it's not just the direct financial cost. Um, you know, I, I think there, there's a lot of other you know things that, that go along with the food waste. Um, so you know, from from what you know, we've looked at. Uh, we did a, a study with uh, Arena last year, the uh, Australian Renewable Energy Agency, um, looking specifically at at food waste, um, particularly in a, a large shop, shopping center. Uh, it was a really good example of, you know, um, what what it means to try and manage that waste. Then, then obviously, uh, for the individual businesses, it's it's tricky. They all want to do the right thing. They have employees that, you know, want to work for sustainable businesses. So, so it was interesting, you know, that the cost was, you know, um, uh, there is the financial of, of, you know, what that cost to transport it, collect it, um, send it to landfill, but the social cost, you know, the, the environmental costs, you know, seem to be as um, uh, pressing, I think, you know, and I think now that everyone's more aware of, you know, where our uh, greenhouse gas emissions come from, uh, or, or landfills and the kind of state of, of those, um, so, so there were some big costs, you know, in, in that physical cost, um, you know, in, in actually moving that material, the CO2 footprints of, of moving that material. So anywhere where you have that opportunity to reduce that, you know, really brings so many kind of benefits around it. Um, it we looked at in that in that uh, example of Eastland, the, the shopping center, um, you know, their their spend was over one hundred thousand dollars a year on on food waste. Um, and you know they they want a positive environmental benefit that there were other costs associated with the food waste there because of the complex nature of, of lots of uh you know small businesses within that uh arena um they, they bring them to a certain uh, central receiving area so it created odors it created an unpleasant working environment pest issues so there were a whole range of things that you know were, were kind of coming alongside this that we didn't even kind of anticipate you know we, we didn't see and and then you know for for us you know it's, we look at it very much with that lens of you know uh, reusing that material making the absolute most out of it so and capturing that value of the energy in there yeah. and then obviously getting that back into food production so the um, the system that we design and develop um, takes the volatile solids out and then leaves you with a product that's uh, been pasteurized digested um, and ready to go back into um, food production again. So you're building that circular economy model. And, and again, I'll let Rowan, you know, kind of uh, fill in the gaps on his side because um, it, it works so well with what we do and, you know, reducing that, you know, um, and, and one of the, the points that we saw was um, the Eastland and, and other scenarios, they have very limited access for trucks coming and going. So there's some very practical things. So that kind of goes, that kind of goes the, the challenges of running a business, right? You, you've got, you know, physical constraints on your site, but you've also got costs, you know, so, you know, did, you know, you know Rowan or, or Doug, you know, what, what kind of costs are businesses looking at here for managing waste? Is there, you know, is there a rule of thumb? I'll let uh, Rowan kind of take that if that's all right. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, because it is, it is hard, you know, and I think there's a lot of examples, but um, we, we see like some of the costs I've analyzed are kind of from a direct financial cost of, of five to, you know, 10 or 20 percent of a business, um, you know, in kind of extreme cases. But generally around that kind of five to 10 percent is what we find in the direct waste cost. But we also look at the um, uh, food waste plus then uh, trade waste. So anything going down the, the organics going down the drain. So we, we try to aim to get that. But. Rowan, you might have a little bit more insight on, on some of those direct costs. Yes, absolutely. So um, typically most organisations are still um, sending their food waste into large compactors, skips and alike, um, which then is going off to landfill. Uh, when, when you're taking, if it's not being measured, they have no idea um, what costs and associations the food waste is doing. Now, considering that food waste is 80% water, it's extremely heavy it compacts down into a skip and they're getting charged per weight and so when you start thinking that or understanding that most of the state governments are increasing the levies 
So Vict, uh, New South Wales and Victoria especially are continually increasing those levies. So the costs are associated with disposal to landfill is continually going up, you know, some would upward to $550 a tonne. And when you consider that you know, maybe 45% of your your compactor is food waste, of mm. which which 80% of it is the weight of the food waste and you're getting charged for water plus yeah. all the environmental impacts that are associated with that, it's not a, it's not a great outcome. Um, and so the biggest challenge I'm sure Doug faces as, as well as we do is is the education piece, is the impact of food waste to landfill. Um, not many know about it um, throughout the general public. And so, and so why, why, should, why should hospitality businesses in particular really pay attention? Aside from the cost side of things, what are the kind of pressures your customers are seeing associated with food waste and why should businesses you know, you know, act on this? Sorry, I just dropped out there, Scott. Would you repeat that? <laughs> That's a fantastic question. You know, <laughs> no, it's sorry. Just gone. Sorry about that. <laughs> no. Um, why should why should businesses really um, be focused on the the well, well, the challenge of the opportunity, not just the economic side of things? What are the, what are the kind of other external pressures that the businesses in the sector um, need to be addressing um, these kind of issues? Well, I mean, especially in hospitality, a real important thing is that, that, that even though I've just said that a lot of people don't understand uh, the impact of food waste landfill, a lot of corporates do, un do understand this. And so in order to um, have a sustainable business and encourage more corporate events, so it could be um, off-sites or whatever it may be from a hotel space, they need to be start doing the right thing. So whether it's from solar, it's the great water, and then they need to start concentrating on their waste and one of the lowest hanging fruit is lowest hanging is um food waste and it's it's quite easy to actually manage that and do have an improvement which they can then display to their customers in the wider community that they're not just talking it they're actually walking um the benefits and reducing their um actual environmental footprint on their particular site yeah, it's been, it's one of those interesting things. Is you know we we as a as a you know I actually don't know the numbers, but as a population, yeah, you know, we've all got our multicolored bins and recycling and everything else like that. We, as individuals, we we think we're quite good at managing our waste stream, which I don't think the numbers stack up to deliver that. But when it comes to consumption, it, that that kind of pressure when you go and consume outside that outside the home, I think, it is a driving factor within the hospitality industry and. You know, social license to operate as well as you know just good business minimizing waste and, and if i can add on to that you know i think i mean there's some practical considerations as well for hospitality businesses one of the things that we found you know really pressing and i think rowan just sort of touched on that um you know is, is really important is that the actual physical space you know to to manage this um you know so the material itself um you know does it, it's relatively bulky but but when you kind of reduce that water element out of it, um, you know, you're left with a very small volume. Um, and, and when you've got pressures around rents and, you know, kind of um, retail hospitality, you know, space is, is not uh, a cheap exercise, you know, as, as real estate prices go up. So there's there's a, an actual space cost to, you know, uh -huh. the waste. Um, and, and I think, you know, going to the social life, I, I come back to that a lot, you know, because it just comes up in all our conversations. You know, businesses that, you know, are kind of taking that leap, they're changing, changing to compostable, um, you know, uh, silverware or, or, you know, cutlery plates, things like that. People pay attention and, and they're starting to recognize, you know, the businesses that do. And, and, and whether that's, you know, a, a direct conscious choice or subconsciously, they, they start kind of gravitating towards those businesses. They want to su support businesses that, you know, fit their you know, uh, ethos of, of, you know, protecting environment and trying to do the right thing. And it's a massively complicated thing for hospitality. I've, you know, been, been through a bit of, you know, um, some of the, the design challenges of, you know, changing over from, you know, older systems or, you know, taking plastics out of their systems. And, and it is a, a big challenge, um, you know, to find, you know, the appropriate materials that work for everybody that are food safe. And, mm. you know, so I, I can definitely understand that, um, you know, and, but, I, th I think businesses are starting to, to shift and, and then that changes the landscape as well. It, it makes it more efficient, you know, when, when you start getting uh, businesses working together, 
they, they start, you know, um, changing the supply chains for, for the compostable packaging, for example. Yep. The more that get, get on board, you know, the, the more viable that becomes. And the more they team up to tackle the waste challenge, you know, um, using systems like Rowan's and, and my, myself, um, you know, it, it does start to change that, you know, slowly but surely. And, and, and this is where SAF comes in, I think, quite, you know, to the fore is you, you present opportunities for people to be able to, you know, uh, find affordable ways to integrate these things. They have a little bit of an upfront cost, but then, you know, you've got this very long payback and you've got all those other paybacks around the side, yeah. you know, it's, beyond the financial. Yeah, it's quite an interesting thing, you know, it, it, you know moving a little bit to um, uh, travel, you know, it, you know, I've got some data here, which I'm going to read off, off my screen here. So apologies, according to a 2021 study by booking.com. So looking at, at, at holiday makers, um, you know, eighty-three percent of travellers think sustainable travel is vital. You know, so yeah, you know, demands from customers are coming through like this. With sixty-one percent adding that the pandemic has made them want to travel more sustainably in the future. I think, <laughs> you know, when we're all locked into our homes and we live amongst our own waste, <laughs> um, it makes us a little bit more conscious about where we want to spend our time. Absolutely. Well, I just. Just, just, just on, I see one of the questions there, just uh, the impact of COVID uh, pandemic on the hospitality trade. Um, I, I think it's uh, it's been twofold. Uh, it's been obviously very tough to come back from it. But, but what I've observed is a lot of organisations have dropped the buffets, uh, which is just the ridiculous amount of food waste that was generated. Uh, because the challenge of a, of a buffet is if I go at the start of the of the, the lunch to the end of the lunch i expect i'm paying the same amount of money i expect the same amount of food there available for me mm. and it was just such a such a waste and there's numerous places that do not do the, the buffets anymore so i mean that's a great thing um so for doug and 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 myself there's plenty of business for unavoidable food waste of all the preparation waste we don't need the food waste that's being gen generated that should be a don't produce in the first place if you do produce it give it to the needy that need it and then the rest can go to um you know technologies such as ours to repurpose well that, that's right i mean this is the hierarchy of needs i suppose in in the circular economy right you know in the old days reduce reuse recycle but now it's actually a lot more sophisticated by that and and what your technologies are really um trying to deal with is the unavoidable stuff we've done everything before we get to this point and we're trying to minimize that and maximize the value value there absolutely um and and just a a quick shout out to we partnered with um oz harvest and and others you know and it's great to see you know, that, that can be avoided, you know, and, and reused, you know, and, and like Rowan, you know, uh, absolutely echo the same thing. We don't want to be at the front end. We don't want to be creating more issue. We want no. to be, you know, at that tail end, you know, solving that, that last mile um, and, and reducing, you know, kind of that, that impact, you know, and we, we work a lot upstream, you know, in, in the farming, you know, communities and, you know, they, they don't want to see anything wasted, you know, um, you know, it, it's almost heartbreaking. They work very hard to, you know, produce all that food, you know, for the restaurants, for, you know, consumers, and, and they want that, you know, material utilized as, as much as possible. And, you know, so, so I think there's some real, um, you know, genuine, you know, sentiment coming through and, and, you know, how we can kind of tackle this bit by bit, take you know, one bite at a time as it were, but um, you know, I think I think we're getting there and it's great to see hospitality responding to that challenge. Yeah, look, and I think, yeah. I think that, you know, there's been some fabulous, we've seen a lot of that, you know, upstream kind of food waste and diverting to higher and better uses, but to be very, very clear, I mean, we're, we're really talking about the last little bit of the stuff that you don't, yeah. you, you just don't want to send it to landfill, you know, that's where, it creates methane, the, the global warming impact there. And how how do we solve that? You know, that last little bit piece to it. Um, and so, you know, ha, you know, it naturally leads to the kind of solutions that businesses can can be can be implementing here. And it sounds like your two businesses kind of work hand in glove in a supply chain to it. Rowan, maybe you want to start a little bit about what your technology is and what you know what it, what is. Yeah, the kind of what what is your systems, you know, and how can you know, our funding help 
your customers put this kind of um, technology into their business so that we can reduce the environmental impact but drive profitability in a business yeah well it's it's got just like you we you said earlier there's there's competing priorities and they continue to be competing priorities as we continue to go along and the easiest thing for most organizations is the status quo just do what we've been always doing we'll just dump it into to general waste put it all together because we don't either we don't have the resources to be able to do the separation um, and so what a lot of organizations are looking for so our waste master technology is for especially for the hospitality between 100 kilos and 800 kilos and so to be able to provide them financial uh, opportunities to be able to extrapolate the, the cost of that but see the see the benefits up front and that's especially from a um, sustainability and a um, environmental footprint um, is very very ben beneficial for for those types of organizations so as mentioned at the very start we've been around since 2016 it's our own ip it's our own technology the waste master i don't have a picture there of it at the moment and we're manufacturing in in in, in sunny albury where doug is at the moment uh, we actually manufacture there for global distribution uh, it's all built to australian standards and we adhere to the un sustainability development goals specifically um, number 13 being climate action, because we're helping organisations divert food waste from land landfill. Yep. And we're measuring. So each one of our waste masters is connected uh, with a, a mobile SIM. We can remote into each one globally. We can fix the, the faults. We can measure the, the volumes going in, the reduction, the volumes coming out as a residue. And we can then work out, depending on the location of, of where a waste master is. So we've got waste masters throughout um, as mentioned earlier, up in the middle of Caratha, um, we've got them in middle of Sydney. Uh, we've got through a lot of the uh, Defence Force uh, barrack sites throughout Australia. Depending on where it's located, it depends what we do with the, the byproduct and repurpose. So what we tend to do is we either go to anaerobic digestion, uh, composting, worm farming, waste to energy. And then we're on this journey in the next few years to improve the um, the benefit of the residue and, and start working towards pet food and aquaculture feedstock and the like. Yeah. And so, so get that so, real full circularity. And so, so just give me a, a, an example here. You know, we have one of your pieces of kit sitting in a, in a business, they put all their food waste in it. It goes through something and spit something out the other end. That sounds like it feed, feeds into, you know, um, uh, Doug's business as well. Uh, absolutely. So, so our pro our processing. So we're using you know we're using airflow heat, a bit of heat. We're doing some. We've got paddles for agitation. And so we're just what we're what we're doing is we're stripping out the moisture content out of the organics and we're drying it. So we reduce it by up to eighty percent. The output is a, a inert, pathogen free, inert sub substance that's storable. So it's ideal for, for for Doug's facilities because we're very stripped out. We've done process number one and stripped out that moisture content content that still holds that calorific and energy value so not dissimilar to blood and bone and so where that's uh, really packed with a, a lot of um um, pa um power and um additives of that is our residue is packed with a lot of good nutrients as per the original volume that went in and so you're producing a consistent waste stream and this is how your two businesses work together you're producing a consistent waste stream which you know, biodigestion is uh, required, require that consistency as opposed to, you know, a lot of dairy one day and a lot of protein the next kind of thing. That That's correct. Yeah. yeah. So, so for us, um, you know, it's, it's very helpful to have that. And, and we, we see, you know, um, cause we do, we want to capture all the value of all those nutrients that are coming through. Um, and, and, you know, that, that does derive a lot of that value, the, the consistency, um, in terms of energy production, um, you know, so, so we, we, we team up, um, and, and our ideal is to team up with kind of those food manufacturers upstream where they've got, you know, that trade waste, uh, that liquid waste, um, you know, coming out, um, and, and we can, you know, deal with that on site, um, you know, in those, in those kinds of situations and then open up to, you know, uh, community um you know input for you know what rowan's material and others so we can kind of really you know tackle that problem in a almost a hub and spoke type model um you know really reducing that transport down to that you know for if, if you're reducing yeah. you know uh, down to 20 percent of the original volume 
you've got a massive impact on how many trucks are on the road and the emissions associated with it and yeah and you know just uh the road wear and tear all, all the things that are associated so so we kind of see benefit in teaming up together as we start rolling out more and more you know beyond just the farm gate and, and we do see this as a regional solution as well for communities um you know where they might have a, a, a couple waste masters or similar systems um, set up and, and they can then take it to, um, you know, the farmer down the road who, you know, uh, can utilize the energy, um, you know, repower their systems, provide energy back into, you know, that local community, um, you know, in a way that, that is uh, reasonable and, and realistic. The, the capital costs for our systems are a bit higher again, um, you know, as a, a specialty equipment and, and lots of things involved in that power conversion and making sure it's safe and, and, and built to spec. So, um, you know, it's, it's a really good way to team up to deal with the, the problem, um, you know, where, wherever it sits, you know, across the country in those regional areas, in the city, you know, wherever that, uh, that food waste is, um, you know, works, works really well, you know, for us as well. So, so, you know, Rowan, you talked about the calorific value being maintained within your system. And obviously that works well for Doug's because you've got the energy input and, and Doug's taking that product and generating energy or clean heat or whatever it's going to be. But that, that calorific value can also be using, as you mentioned, the blood and bone for local. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's not designed to go straight onto um, the garden. And the reason being is because our waste master we can input or load any type of food waste and so at any given day the composition of that food waste will be will differ right and so then the output's going to differ so you can't um unless you have single source where you, you you've got a known known food waste going in and and no one coming out then you can then apply it to a land a lot easier but so so that's the, that's one of the biggest challenges um is the, or the benefit of the waste master is you can put pretty much anything organic in there. It can be mixed. We don't need prescribed, but then the output is going to change considering, um, I, considering what's gone in. Can I ask a, a bit of a silly question? Does this stuff smell? Uh, as in the, the residue? Yeah. The byproduct? Uh, it, ha it has an organic smell and depending on what's going, it's not pun like, like to describe it's not pungent. So it's an organic smell. Yeah. Um, and it's being processed correctly. It's 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 not a problem. It's storable for up to two years. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. So that, that's. I mean, the reason I ask that is that you know we we you know food waste and we all now have these green bins and they you know we when I was in the city of Melbourne there was a, a terrible problem with waste and the smell that we used to come out of it. But this kind of helps improve the amenity of particularly inner urban areas, but also you know, the waste compact areas of, the, of, a, of a facility, right? Well, exactly. So with those waste compactors, I mean, they're leaking. Uh, yes. And so you've got mo moisture from the organics coming out, and especially in the middle of summer, I mean, it's just starting to evaporate and create the odours, yeah. uh, which is very un unpleasant. Yeah, yeah, right, okay. Um, you know, so so th th these are all really good solutions, and thanks. They bring on these um, questions; they're all coming through now, which is fantastic. To, to will address, but the reason we're talking to both of you here is we have we have a form of finance, environmental upgrade finance, which you, you know is a unique form of finance which attaches to land. Um, and a lot of your customers might be owners or occupiers of land, but they all have this common problem of waste, right? You know. Either I've got a, you know, a, a, a hospitality business that has to find, you know, efficient ways of getting use rid of that and reducing and manage my cost. But we can put, and but the environmental benefit of these projects is is very clear, you know, and it, it, it comes through both in a greenhouse gas emission avoided methane at uh, a, a tip, but also you know some of the local amenity stuff that we were touching on as well. So the the, the finance really can help. Um, make these kind of opportunities commercial i think for for businesses rowan do you you know because we do a lot of um solar financing do you want to talk to your solution and how does that kind of stack up you know as you said businesses have lots of things they could do but only limited things they can do you know why would they be looking at your kind of solution well, I mean, I mean, one of one of the things that I'm sure Doug will agree with this particular one is that uh, you know waste is not sexy. 
Um, it's not a sexy industry. It's a, it, we need it. Uh, it's a very integral part of society. Uh, we generate waste of all different streams and being organics uh, is a real uh, big one because of the impact to the environment. And so for the, if you invest for every dollar you're investing into um, an organic solution, um, you're having a 1.6 times multiplier for the environmental benefit, even against the likes of the solar technology. So the government's really pushing, and I saw a question there, how's the government helping helping us? So federal, um, state and local. Uh, there could be a lot more um, initiatives uh, for organisations such as Doug and I to help organisations jump jump over to start processing their food waste, particularly on site, and then start repurposing it into a, a beneficial use, like we're seeing what solar is doing uh, for the whole community. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. So 1.6 times the environmental benefit for a hospitality business in putting your solution in as opposed to solar. Correct. Yeah, right. That's, that's quite interesting. So, and that's why we can fund this, right? So we're the only form of finance in the country that legally has to deliver a positive environmental benefit. Um, have you got just quickly, I know I, I kind of skipped over it, but there was a case study that I think uh, you were going to um, put uh, up there. And if we can get that slide up there, it's probably worthwhile just talking about this one. Um, yeah. Just a couple of so, minutes. Yeah, so, so um, yeah, it's, this is a great study, uh, Four Seasons um, Sydney. Uh, they in, they installed one of our smaller systems uh, to try it out for the first you know, couple of months. Loved it so much that, that they actually changed their whole loading dock area and halved their cool room to incorporate a larger system. So they've got a Wastemaster 800 uh, now installed and it's meeting a lot of their, their KPIs in regards to diversions. Right, and so just just quickly, just since the installation, um, they've they've put through forty nine tons of food waste. As as mentioned, all our systems are connected, and we have all load cells, so we understand everything going on there. They've we've reduced it down to thirteen tons or rounding figures of um, residue, which we've then up in Sydney at the moment because there's no anaerobic digester commercial sites available. We've sent it off to composting. Um, but they've saved their 65 tonnes for their particular side of CO2 equivalent. Yeah, right. And, and just, uh, you know, what, what's the kind of capital cost of a system like that? So you're talking about a quarter of a, quarter of a million dollars okay. for, a system, so they, for a system like that? Yeah, these are, these are perfect kind of systems for, you know, obviously businesses like this, but, but others that we could, we could fund going, going into it. One of the questions here, um, contamination. Uh, the question is how do you deal with contamination but uh, what kind of contamination might we be talking about you know either you or you Rowan or Doug go for a duck yeah I, I can speak to that our systems are uh, um, a little bit sensitive to it depending on what the uh, contamination is um, we, we can bolt in things um, like in a hospitality sense where we know there's gonna be knives and forks and other uh, metalware um, you know, we, we can capture that, um, glass is tricky. Um, you know, so, so we can put in some physical separation systems. Um, it's more the single use plastic. So we often work with, and, and we, we want, you know, it, like I said, it, it is about capturing that last mile, but it's also about how businesses can kind of, uh, transform their, their systems into more sustainable upstream. So where they might have a, a plastic fork or plastic bags. You know, are there equivalent, um, you know, paper or other, you know, compostable products that can be used to reduce that loading? We can deal with a certain amount, but we, we at the end of the day, want a very clean product. When the, the problem with a, a contaminated um, stream is, um, you know, is this continuation of, of plastics into the environment. And when they go out to a farm, when they go into a food, you know, production setting, um, you know, that's uh, far from ideal. Um, you know, so they, they start questioning and they, they want the benefits of all the organic matter, those nutrients that are coming back, um, you know, and, and offsetting their uh, fossil fuel derived, um, you know, chemical fertilizers, you know, so we, we have to kind of, um, you know, walk a little bit of a line. And that's where it comes back to education, as, as Rowan said, you know, working with 
you know, uh, or, or suppliers of, of the organic input material to make sure that those streams are really clean. Um, you know, and, and there is some behavior change around uh, staff, um, you know, and getting them to, you know, be a bit more proactive. There are some mechanical things that can be done, you know, to help separate in our, our case. But it is really, you know, kind of working and designing out um, as much of that, uh, you know, contamination as, as possible, you know, upstream, um, you know, for us. So I, I think that's that's kind of the key. I think, you know, everybody's keen to keep, you know, those those materials, you know, and this this is what the challenge with the circular economy is really how, how do you change an entire system that we have currently and, yeah. and go back to, you know, sustainable models that we've had in the in the past but we just haven't implemented on a you know mass, mass scale in in a modern modern context modern society so so we've got some you know uh challenges um i, I think most all of hospitality that we you know um managed to, to work with and and the talks that we've had they've all been very receptive you know and and i think they're keen to you know change they're, they're looking at their whole system so yeah, contamination is, is a massive issue, um, but, you know, less so the uh, issues that we have in, internally as much as kind of what that flow through effect is. Yeah. And, and Rowan, <laughs> I imagine getting a knife and fork into your waste masters wouldn't be too good. Oh, look, it's actually, uh, look, it's, it's not ideal, but the cutlery crockery, uh, similar to the Doug, I mean, it, it's extremely robust system. Um, but because we're measuring uh, the efficiency of the system, we can understand and we know when there's a lot of contamination in there. Um, it, I can't stress that it's the education piece. It's yeah, right. the education be, and it's it's the operator. So whether it's the typical, it could be at a hospitality location, it could be the cleaning company. And it's about taking them on the journey of the why. It's, you know, most of them see a piece of metal there and, you know, what's upper management done now? Um, it's about educating them on you know, what's happening at home. You know, you've got FOGO starting to come through and the, the, the benefits of that and, and the why. And then so why is an organisation, a hospitality site, like Four Seasons, what, why have they implemented something like this? And what's the benefit and, and why are we trying to do this? Mm. And so it's just breaking it down into all the little pieces and all the, the, the stop points of every of the process in it internally. We'll get a cleaner outcome but from a contamination point of view uh you know like Doug said that it's soft plastics it's it's we see in hospitality spaces it's going to be your it's your cling wrap it's your gloves it's your piping bags it's the rags yeah. um and that's what you typically will see in there so it kind of you touched on something there is behavior change and education pieces as to you know why is this important and everything else like that but there was another question here about other challenges you uh, you face and being successful here in Australia. I mean, we touched on that, education and behaviour change and why we should be doing this, but what other barriers do you face? Uh, um, you know, I, I do, you know, kind of think that we've, we've sort of um, been, been trained. I, I, I kind of look back, you know, a few generations and, you know, people really were uh, very mindful about resources, especially when they were, you know, a bit more scarce. And, and we, in modern systems, you know, the, the answer is throw it in a bin and, and let somebody else, you know, downstream deal with it. Yeah. So, so you know, I, I do think, you know, it is, um, you know, a cult, cultural issue. And, and one of the things that's been highlighted, you know, through um, shows like The War on Waste and, you know, um, there's, there's been a lot of education around, you know, recycling rates. And, you know, one of the big things is, you know, where it touches on both the contamination um, you know, that reduces the amount that's getting recycled. So, so there is kind of this kind of dual benefit to, you know, doing that and, and thinking about these systems. Um, the other, other challenges, I think outside of that, you know, they're kind of minor technical issues. Um, you know, so, so we're not, you know, too, uh, you know, fussed about that, that side of things. Um, you know, it, it is kind of reeducating people on, you know, how they see and they value their, um, waste as as a resource you know i think i think that's just the big primary challenge yeah. after that you know we have small things that we, we you know tackle with logistics and a few other things but but um and and training you know people up in in, in a new way of thinking and, and operating 
um, and, and what that looks like, you know, in those individual businesses and then how they can really maximize, you know, the, the financial savings, um, you know, yeah. and, and get out that message of sustainability. We, we want our machines to help tell a story. I think, you know, for, for both Rowan and I, it's important that, you know, the, the machines are, are only kind of a little bit of a, uh, a mechanism, but it's, it's that story, you know, that goes beyond that, that, you know, people can tell to their customers, to their uh, staff and, you know, to their yeah. shareholders and, you know, everybody who's who's involved and stakeholders throughout the, you know, chain, you know, how we, you know, uh, make the absolute most out of these things. Yeah. And Rowan, from, you know, what are some of the challenges you're seeing? Look, and I think it comes down a lot to do with government and the assistance that the governments can actually provide the industry. I mean, um, I, I'm all about the you know, the aftermarket. So, so what are we going to do with the, the the products? Because if you if they concentrate on developing an industry after the fact of of recycled goods for repurposing, so no no matter what the stream is, the the pull through effect will just happen because the demand will will warrant it to be pulled through because we need the recycled repurposed product at the end to make new new products or services or whatever it be so i think that's the the biggest challenge what we see here in australia comparatively to other parts of the world where where we work in is just the government assistance i mean we've got different you know states who have got different programs who are very it's very short cited um for businesses I, I think not only just for businesses like ourselves australian we're both australian businesses uh, there's not a hell of a lot of support support there and then for the consumer um there's so many so many um you know red tape and rules and hurdles you've got to jump through just to be able to um go along one of these grants or whatever it may be it, mm. it makes it very very difficult so that's where that's the probably the biggest challenge here in australia is just that there's a bit of a disconnect is is there a is, is you know different roles for local state and federal obviously but um you know um you know pricing of of landfill levies seems to be a big lever that state governments at least try to pull on do you want to make a comment there or steer clear <laughs> um well I, I can i can you know say a bit i i, I do think you know and, and we've had a lot of conversations with local you know at, at council level state federal and you know it, it is a fine balance between carrot and stick you know of incentivizing you know the uptake of um you know technology i think government only has kind of a certain you know role to play uh, i actually think and, and this is my personal opinion but you know that government um you know can enable but they, they kind of follow because they, they can't push an individual um, you know, solution. What what they can do is is help to you know uh, inform. I think that the public of you know what are the challenges, what are some of the opportunities, what are the barriers you know to that uptake. Um, you know, so I think the levy is a bit of a you know it's a bit of a stick. You know, it, it says you know there is a real cost to waste. Um, you know, and and they don't want to penalize businesses, but they want to you know encourage them to look at alternatives, whether that's composting the waste master systems the you know biodigesters what whatever those you know solutions are you know in the chain to start tackling that you know and and, and pushing back a little bit you know against the you know let's let's throw it in the bin and, and and hope something good happens with it you know so it is it's a tricky one you know and, and I, I i um you know the the only other thing i'd add to rowan's is you know we've worked across you know epa um, sustainability Victoria, um, you know, arena, lots of different departments, uh, water, um, you know, uh, agriculture and, and getting them together in a room is probably one of the most powerful things you can do and, and really get them because there's so many of these things that cross over, you know, uh, for, from waste and energy and water use and, you know, all mm. these things, resources, getting them in the room together and really kind of nutting out a solution or at least to address, you know, the problems and how they affect each other. I think yeah. that's probably yeah. going to be key, you know, for, from my perspective. Um, yeah, no, look, I think that's a, that's a, that's a key thing. I mean, you, you know, there was, there's a lot of, a lot of governments and strategies now, you know, particularly with the energy, green energy transition underway and, and using that. But I think Doug, you used the words, you know, 
waste as a resource, right? It's a key driver here is, you know, supply chains creating demand, creating opportunities from the waste here. You know, I think, you know, just putting it into landfill and you know, or onto a ship to, you know, wherever all the recycling stuff used to go to, but now we have to maintain it here. Um, I think there's, I think there's a fundamental paradigm shift and roles each level of government and individual businesses can deal with it, right? So I think it's one of the biggest challenges, you know, I'm, I'm an energy efficiency person from way back, single biggest opportunity from the energy um, transition, uh, but it's all fragmented into lots of little different solutions. And, you know, clearly the Waste Master and uh, your technologies there, Doug, you know, play part um, in that, in that, collective whole, I suppose. Um, I, I think, Scott, I think just really quickly, I think one of the things that I, I've observed, I think would be great would be shared knowledge. So shared knowledge from councils to states to even corporations in the same industries. I mean, there's so much wasted time on doing the same thing. Uh, yeah. There's just not enough shared shared knowledge. Uh, we're all talk. a lot of people are talking about it and not, not enough being shared. Well, look, I mean, you know, to to a lot to a lot of credit, there is a lot of information coming out there um, around waste and everything else, and whether or not it's landing. But as I said, you know, I think at our household level, we 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 all see, you know, the green waste bin, the recycling bin, and everything like that. But the the opportunity within business is particularly hidden. You know, it's it's not part of their rates, right? It's a contracted service. Um, yep. It's not, you know, it's a completely, so I, I agree with you there, I think, but as individuals, we, there, there is a lot more, um, you know, there's a comment here just about how do we make waste sexy? Well, I don't know if we can ever do that, but, you know, we, we can at least bring it to the forefront, right? So, um, and, and yeah, the war on waste w was exactly, it's, you know, one step yes, right. of that. Yeah, so I think. Well, I think I think it, I think it's about educating everyone to that we've got to try and not use virgin material and use you know, existing um, recycled material in all different streams. Uh, you know, the more yeah. that we we can do that, I mean, the uh, uh, that that would be uh, fantastic. Yeah, and I think I think if people can stop, you know, from a businesses' perspective, if you, if you stop thinking about waste. As, as, as a waste, you know, it's, yeah, it's an inefficiency of business, right? It's also an opportunity, it's a product, it's a resource for something else. And how can you maximise the resources that your business is producing, right? And I think that's, that's some of the fundamental kind of questions that we deal with across the spectrum, not just for hospitality businesses, but, but all businesses, is that every time you waste something, you're being inefficient in production of your goods and services and um yep. you know i think you know there, there there is a there is a good story i heard from a um a family friend of ours who was in the perfumery food through flavors and fragrances and there used to be a one factory and the only thing that went in there was tons and tons and tons of pineapples and there was a man with uh his donkey and cart and took one uh, trailer load away a day and the other products and services that came out of that factory, not one tomato went in there, but tomato sauce came out, right? So they were being completely uh, productive and using everything that went into there and, and being highly efficient. Look, I'd like to really thank you um, for your time. Um, there's, uh, okay, well, actually, before I do cut off, we've got a little bit of time here. There's, there's questions just coming. What's the hardest food um, source to, to to use in either of your systems. Go, Doug. Silence um, is well, yeah. I, I, uh, I think there's still probably for us, like, uh, you know, grease trap waste is, is probably one of the hardest. Um, uh, you know, in, in terms of what, you know, the businesses side, um, you know, it's a, a bit of a challenge. Um, I'm not sure what else, you know, um, would be challenging for us, we're, we're pretty, um, you know, a, able to tackle a range of you know, different things, um, you know, so, so it's, it's not so much that uh, high protein things, you know, takes a little bit for a digester to get settled in. We equate our systems to what your system's doing, um, you know, the, the healthier you feed it, um, the better it works, 
So not too many fats, not too many oils and greases, um, you know, a little bit of protein and lots of green stuff. So that's, that's kind, kind of like, our, our kind of like a, good, a good diet, right? A little bit of everything. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's, it's a good lesson in life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're not too dissimilar. Um, all the oils and fats um pretty hard to process with our, with our system we're running at pretty low temp very low temperatures and so we're not able to evaporate all that um it's probably one of the biggest challenges yeah and do, do you just just uh, you've said that you do what, 100 to 800 kilograms you know that's something heavier than me on a daily basis what about smaller businesses what are their kind of opportunities in this space yeah um well, I, I saw one of the comments there is there's some uh, sort of home or smaller systems. Um, I think they're still in the early stages of um, their invention and, and I've seen a number of them coming out in the, into the industry. Um, we, do, we, we don't, that, it's a real big challenge for smaller cafes who produce um, say for 20 kilos and it's about trying to keep it centralised and, and the economics is really hard to have a collection service of you know, 10 cafes in a small area that have 20 kilos. Um, just the cost, the manpower, um, you can use, I know, we know organisations that you'll use electric vehicles to be able to do the collections, but then where do they take them? How does it get processed? How does it work in summertime? So it's, it's a real challenge for those smaller um, organisations and even di really difficult for remote uh, as, as well in smaller communities. Uh, it's a big challenge for them where their volumes aren't <clears throat> big enough for a system such as Doug or even, even ours. Uh, what do you do with it? And Fogo is a great example for regional. Yeah. Uh, and we, we see, um, uh, you know, kind of community kind of, you know, as being sort of the solution where they come together to, you know, uh, get, get, you know, a system like Rowan's or mine, um, you know, implemented. So, um, but but it is it is challenging with those small waste streams. So um, it takes a little bit of creativity um, and, and working with, you know, I think there's a few companies now that, uh, um, you know, are, are kind of doing some of that small scale stuff. But it, it's a little little bit tricky. Yeah, it's definitely a tricky one. Yeah, there was one question in here which we didn't touch on before about regional towns. Um, and we're starting to get the wind up here, but I'm just going to just finish this one up here. Um, but regional towns, um, you know, because you touched on some of the collection ones, what, what, what are the kind of solutions that they can be looking at? Is, is it that community-based approach? Um, I, I think so. I, I mean, we get examples a lot, you know, where, um, you know, uh, culturally, um, you know, European, Scandinavian, you know, they're very used to, Kind of sharing resources, um, you know. So as a community, they might have someone who, you know, will will collect, you know, some of the food waste and you know uh, that tailings and and put that into a community digester, um, you know. So th there are a few of those kinds of solutions. I think, you know, um, it, it is up to that regional community to come up with, you know, that bit of a solution. They they need somewhere, and this is where the link to what SAF and and making this technology more, you know, available and accessible. Um, you know, across the country, we, we should have these, whether it's the, you know, waste master type systems or our systems, you know, in every, you know, reasonable sized town of, you know, uh, uh, 2000 plus, uh, even a thousand, you know, we think it's, it's reasonable to have, you know, that model, but that means that the community has to be on board with that, you know, model. So it's, it's working with those zero waste groups or, you know, those other uh, community minded groups, um, uh, the gardening groups that get benefit out of, you know, the um, uh, resultant, you know, output of material uh, for their gardens, you know, things like that. So it's it's really the community approach is great. And, and it's it's a little bit tricky to pull off from a resourcing and manpower where you've got a, a reasonable size regional town. They will have some, you know, collection services in place and, and they can team, you know, with us or, you know, with, a, you know, other, other similar kind of solutions where they have a centralized place to take those small volumes that add up pretty quick. They'll stack, yeah. you know, over over that, uh, you know, fairly Look, quickly. Thank you very much for that, uh, and thank you very much for your time. Look, I think the it's been a very uh, in interesting discussion from my point of view. I hope it's been entertaining for everybody else, and um, thank you all for attending. Look, I think the real opportunity here is businesses that, that dispose of waste, whether it be organic food waste, other waste, 
energy waste, water waste, you know, these are all the kinds of things that we can help fund them because it just makes economic sense, right? You can save on your footprint for your waste, your, 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 your disposal costs, your actual energy input costs as well that go into it. So, you know, come along and chat to, you know, uh, if you've enjoyed the conversation, the video will still be up there, but Rowan, and Doug are, are more than happy to take your questions as am I and our contact details are there. But Jen, thank you very much for your time today. It's been truly fascinating. And, and Doug, I'm, I'm, I'm hugely envious of your location sitting out there in a country <laughs> where you can the sun. Um, me locked up here in Melbourne. It's pretty sunny, but still pretty cold. So Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully everybody can get out and enjoy a bit of this green. That, that's what we're all aiming for is lots more green. So Very good. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, all right, thank guys. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you very for, much. For thank you all. Yeah, thanks for coming, guys. Yeah, bye. Bye.